Hello everyone. Welcome to the 16th lecture of the course. This is the first lecture of module four. In module three, we try to understand the human being, particularly the self. We looked into the activities and potentialities of the self. In particular, we discussed about the higher level activities of the self and we saw how they guide the lower activities. We also looked into the various possible sources of happiness and tried to make out what could be the continuous source of happiness in the self. Now in this module, we are going to discuss existence and we'll see how the whole existence is there as coexistence and how there are different orders in the nature with their innateness, natural characteristic, and how this is all an expression of coexistence. So in this module, we are going to study about nature and existence. And in this lecture, we'll try to understand the whole existence as coexistence. So this is something that we began with while discussing this course. So the human desire is continuous happiness and it is fulfilled by the right understanding, right feeling and right thought and right feeling and right thought put together can be termed as a resolution. And presently we are talking about right understanding that is step one of resolution. And while discussing right understanding, we discussed about the right understanding of human being. Now we are going to talk about right understanding of the existence. So we could see that right understanding or knowing is basically to see the reality as it is. The knower is the self and the known is the whole existence. So we already discussed about knowledge of the human being. Now we are going to discuss about knowledge of existence. So 3.1 is right understanding that is knowing. And we saw that knowing is to see the reality as it is. And the self is the knower and to be known is the entire existence. In that sequence only, we talked about the human being in detail in the previous model. Now we are going to understand the existence. So we are going to talk about knowledge of existence. And after that, we'll talk about knowledge of human conduct. So the process of understanding remains the same. That is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. The content of contemplation is the natural characteristic in every order in the nature. The content of understanding is the innateness of every order in the nature and the content of realization is the coexistence that is the submergence of nature in space. So ultimately we have to see the relationship harmony and coexistence as it is. In module three, we try to understand the human being in depth and in detail. We look into the activities, the needs, the potentialities of the self and we also saw how the happiness can be ensured in continuity. And in this module, we are going to talk about nature and existence. So we'll explore into the following in this module through lectures uh, 16 to 20. Lecture 16 is existence as coexistence. So we'll try to see how coexistence is ever present, ever effective, ever expressive. In lecture 17, we'll see how the coexistence expresses itself as nature in terms of four orders. So we'll see how the submergence shows itself in the form of harmony that is innateness and relationship that is natural characteristic in the four orders. Existence can be understood by awakening to the higher activity of the self as we mentioned right now. So the expression of coexistence is seen as coexistence, harmony and relationship and also effect and gap as it is seen by the self through different activities of the self from realization to testing. So the self can realize the coexistence, understand the harmony, contemplate on the relationship. The self can compare and analyze the effect of one unit on another unit. And also it can sense the gap between two units. So one is able to see the coexistence like this at different levels of the activities of the self. Now the role of human being is to understand the coexistence, that is to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and get resolved. And fulfillment of this role leads to continuous happiness. So we'll gradually see that the whole task that is to be done by the human being is to understand the coexistence, have the feeling and thought of coexistence and live accordingly. So essentially when we say that it is required to rightly understand the existence, it is at the core to be able to see the whole existence as coexistence. And we'll see that coexistence is also central to existence. As we could see that self is central to human being, we will be able to see that coexistence is central to existence. 
Now, something that we had discussed earlier, we'll briefly recap over it and then go into further details. Existence is coexistence, that is units are submerged in space. Space is there everywhere, all pervading, unlimited in size. And units are there limited in size. They are active as well as an activity in themselves. And space is no activity. Now all these units are submerged in space. So space is there inside the unit, space is there on the periphery of the unit, and space is also there outside the unit. And space is there everywhere. So when you look at the units, you can see that the units are energized being in space. They are self-organized being in space and the units are recognizing the relationship and fulfilling the relationship with every other unit being in space. Now, starting from oneself, we can see that the body is energized, isn't it? And the body is there in space. So we are able to see that, yes, the body is energized. Every organ of the body is energized. Every cell of the body is energized. If you look at yourself, you can see that you are also energized. You have energy within. That's how we are active. So the self also has energy. The body also has energy. And how are they energized? Being in space. So I am in space, the body is in space, and I as well as the body are energized being in space. Now, when you look at the nature around, you can see that there are so many units in the nature. All these units are energized. Now, if you start asking how are they energized, then you can see that they are energized being in space. So space is there at the base. Similarly, every unit is self-organized. You can see that your body is self-organized. You just take your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the body keeps on working, isn't it? In a very regulated manner, in a self-organized manner. Every organ of the body is working in such a self-organized manner with every other organ of the body. The organ is made up of so many cells and tissues, and they are made up of so many atoms and molecules, and each of them are working in a very self-organized manner. And that's how the whole body is working in a self-organized manner. Similarly, if you look at yourself, you'll see that you are also self-organized in a way that the moment you have any thought, any feeling of disharmony, you feel unhappy. And the moment you have feeling and thought of harmony, you feel happy. This is being self-organized, being in space. The natural acceptance that we have been referring to, how do I get this natural acceptance? Because I am self-organized being in space. So the whole existence as it is reflects in me and Whenever I do not act in accordance with it, I feel unhappy, I feel troubled, I feel anxious. And if I'm able to see it as it is and also act accordingly, I am happy, I am at peace within. So this is being self-organized. Similarly, if you look at the material units around you, you can see that each of these units are also self-organized. Look at the planet Earth. The Earth is also self-organized. It has been revolving around the sun in a self-organized manner. The satellites are revolving around the planets in a self-organized manner. The planet is also uh, energized, being in space. If you see, the planet Earth is energized, being in space. Now one may feel that the Earth is getting energy from the sun. Then one is prompted to ask, how does the sun get energy? So one may say that the sun is getting energy through fusion of hydrogen into helium. Now from where does the hydrogen get energy? So at some point, you'll have to stop and say that, no, it is self-energized. In a similar manner, we can see that the Earth also is self-energized, being in space. So every unit, right from atom to the whole planet, and so many planets are there, so many solar systems are there in the galaxy, isn't it? and so many galaxies are there. And each of them is energized, each of them is self-organized. Similarly, we can see that every unit recognizes its relationship with every other unit being in space. So the body is able to recognize the relationship with you. You are able to recognize the relationship with the body. Every cell, every atom, every molecule, every organ of the body is recognizing the relation with other units, other organs, systems, cells, and molecules, and thus acting in a cohesive manner. Similarly, the body is recognizing the relation with other units in the nature with air, water, soil, isn't it? You are also able to recognize your relation and that's how we can talk about relationship. When we say relationship is there, it is there 
as the units are able to recognize the relationship with every other unit being in space. So the space is there at the base. So existence is all that exists and being self-organized means that it is there in a definite order, is in harmony, has definite conduct. Therefore, it can be identified, understood, and that's how we are able to talk about the whole existence. So you had uh, gone through this content briefly in the previous course also. Just try to make out whether all these words are clear to you, being energized, being self-organized, and recognizing the relationship. Whether this is clear to you or not, isn't it? You may not be able to see this clearly at this moment, but you can initiate this process of investigation, exploration. And at some point of time, you may come to a state where you are able to see the whole existence as coexistence. You are able to see how the units are energized being in space, self-organized being in space, and how they are participating with every other unit being in space. Now, looking at it further, we can see that the existence is coexistence. The units are there, which are limited in size. They are an activity in themselves, also active with other units. The space is unlimited, it has no limits, it is no activity. And the coexistence is ever present. So as you are taking some examples, try to see whether your body is limited in size or not. So the body is limited in size. The body is an activity in itself. The body is active with other units, with air, water, soil, isn't it? It is active with other units also. Now, how about you? Are you limited in size? So a little bit of exploration will show to you that you are of course limited in size. You are there where the body is there. When you move from one place to another, the body moves as well as you move. And how do you move? Because you are limited in size. You are there with the body. You are coexisting with the body, being at the same point in space. So you are limited in size. You are also an activity. There are so many activities in you, something that we discussed in detail in the previous module. And you are also active with other human beings, with other entities in the nature. The space is there unlimited. It has no limits. You cannot say that the space exists up to here and no longer there. The moment you are able to conceive of anything that is there, the space is already there. So the space is there everywhere. There are so many galaxies, planets, stars, isn't it? In the whole existence and the space is there everywhere. And the space is no activity. There is no activity in the space. It is there at the base of every activity, but space is no activity. And looking further, we can see that the units are submerged in space. All the units which are limited in size, which are activity in themselves, active with other units, are submerged in the space which is unlimited and no activity. And by submergence, it is meant that the units are energized, self-organized, and recognizing the relationship with other units being in space. Further, we can see that the units are of two kinds, material and consciousness. And when you look at yourself, you can see that you are a conscious unit, the body is a material unit. In the material units, there are only two kinds of activities, recognizing and fulfilling. Within you, there are activities of knowing, assuming, recognizing, and fulfilling. Now, all these units are temporary. The conscious units are continuous. If you look at space, it is not a unit. Space is unbounded in time and space, and that's how it is called as ever. Now, if you look at the temporary units, which only have the activities of recognizing and fulfilling, they keep on changing. Their constitution keeps on changing. Okay, isn't it? So you can see that uh, in the material units, let's say we have hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, all these uh, elements are there. They keep on combining and molecules keep on breaking into atoms, atoms keep on combining to form molecules and the constitution keeps changing. If you look at the conscious units, which are continuous, there is no change in the constitution. The activities of the self remain as they are. Okay, that constitution of activities in the self does not change and that's how they are continuous. Here it is ever. So continuous units are unbounded in time, but limited in space. The temporary units are limited in time as well as space. Temporary units are limited in time as well as space. Continuous units are unbounded in time, but bounded in space. Space, which is ever, is unbounded in time and space. 
so this is something that you can try to distinguish between all these three realities the temporary ones the continuous ones and the ever that is the space you we'll see that the material units are bounded in time they are limited in size these are material they are temporary they are an activity in themselves and examples could be like body our body is a material unit now if you look at uh, the conscious units they are unbounded in time okay so when you say i am a continuous unit it means there is no boundedness i am there all the time but the conscious units are limited in size they are not unlimited in size so you see that you are there where the body is there isn't it and you are a continuous unit you are a conscious unit you are an activity so the self is an example of this uh, unbounded limited conscious unit now when you look at the space it is unbounded in size it is unlimited in, it is unbounded in time it is unlimited in size it is ever it is no activity and this is called a space now if you look at the sensation that you get from the body is something similar to the body okay it is temporary similarly the physical facilities if you see they are all temporary and they are also bounded in space so here we can say that all the units which are limited material temporary they are all impermanent the self is permanent in time and the space is permanent in time as well as space so this is the way we can make out the difference between these three realities so these are the three realities so one is material the other one is consciousness and then here we have the space and this is how we need to understand it the coexistence is ever present that is it was there it is there it will be there so for all time all space it is there so the whole existence is there as coexistence all the units are there in coexistence being in space and every unit being in space is energized that is active self organized and recognizing its relationship with other units and fulfilling it this is something that we discussed so this is you this is something that you can see i hope this part is clear now we can also see that this coexistence is ever effective ever effective means that the principle of coexistence applies to every reality from the smallest atom to the biggest the nature as a whole so it is ever effective and it applies to every reality so whatever is happening in the nature in terms of activities is happening by virtue of coexistence being submerged every unit is active in itself and active with other units so it is ever effective isn't it so it is ever present that is it was there it is there it will be there for all places all time it is ever effective means every activity that is taking place in the nature is based on coexistence the coexistence is at the base we will also see that this coexistence is ever expressing and that means that the coexistence is expressing itself in the form of four orders of the nature physical order bio order animal order and human order we have already studied about these four orders in the previous course now the thing to observe here is that how these orders are there self organized active with other orders how they are self uh, energized so this is something that we have to study so you'll we'll see that the physical order includes the atoms to the heavenly bodies all these are there in the physical order the bio order includes the cells to the human body animal order if you see they are coexistence of self and body and the awakening in the self is up to the activities of selecting and testing if you look at the human order we are already awakened to the activity of selecting and testing analyzing and also imaging and there is a need to know and potential to know so presently what we are trying to do we are trying to know the things as they are so the human order presently has awakened to the activities of desire thought and expectation and that means imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing and help to awaken to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization now how this all is happening how this all is there in the existence so it is an expression of coexistence itself
the coexistence itself is expressing in the form of these four orders, which are having definite innateness, natural characteristic, inheritance, isn't it? So existence is coexistence, and units are somewhere in space. All these units are limited in size, activity, in themselves, and they are self-organized, energized, and recognizing the relationship and fulfilling being in space, while the space is unlimited, no activity. Self-organization is available here. While the units are self-organized, in the space, you can see that self-organization is available and being in a space, every unit is self-organized. Similarly, there is change in energy level in every unit in the nature, be it the self or the, be it the conscious unit or the material unit. But when you look at the space, you are able to see that the space is energy in equilibrium. There is no change in energy. It is there at the base of all these transformations in energy. Similarly, you can see that through space, the units are able to recognize and fulfill the relationship. And that is happening as the space is transparent. So the space is transparent. Being in space, I'm able to recognize my relationship with you. I'm able to recognize my relationship with the body. I'm able to recognize my relationship with the rest of nature. And the same thing holds true for other units which are able to recognize the relationship and fulfill it. Now, these units are of two kinds, material and consciousness. These material units are temporary, impermanent. The conscious units are continuous, permanent. There's activity of knowing, assuming, recognizing, and fulfilling here in the conscious units. While in the material units, there is only activity of recognizing and fulfilling. Now, these material units can be classified into two orders, physical order and bio order. Now, if you look at the physical order, the smallest unit of the physical order, which is self-organized, is atom. Atoms combine to make molecules. Molecules combine to make molecular structures. Now, the molecular structures can be of two kinds. Either they are in the form of lumps or they are fluid. So lump means something that retains its shape and size. For example, the building is a lump. If you look at air, water, they're all fluids. Now, these fluids go to make a cell. They form together to make a cell. And the cell is the smallest unit of the bio order. Cells of one kind combine to make plants. Cells of another kind combine to make animal bodies. And cells of another kind combine to make human bodies. Now, when the animal body coexists with the self, that is the conscious unit, it makes the animal order. And when the self coexists with the human body, it makes the human order, isn't it? So in the animals, the awakening is only up to the activity of testing and selecting, while in human order, the awakening is up to the activity of imaging, analyzing, comparing also. Now here, what is required to be done is to ensure gyan, that is right understanding. When I'm able to realize the whole existence as coexistence, it is called as activity completeness. Now, when I'm able to live accordingly, when I'm able to live with right understanding, right feeling, and right thought, then in my conduct, I can see my completeness. My conduct is always definite. I'm able to see that there is no indefiniteness in my conduct, and that is conduct completeness. And this is what we really want to be. We want to have activity completeness within oneself, and we also want to have conduct completeness in our living. And this is the real meaning of development, which is not cyclic. All these things that you see here are cyclic. For example, the seed grows into a plant, the plant grows into a tree, the tree goes back to the soil, where another seed germinates, isn't it? Your body also goes back to the soil. The animal body also goes back to the soil. So we can see that there is a cyclicality involved here. So whatever we try to achieve in the form of physical facilities or the body is impermanent. It is not going to last forever. It is not going to continue. But if you are able to transform yourself as a self, if you are able to ensure activity completeness, conduct completeness, this is something that is going to be with you all the time in continuity. And that's how it is not cyclic. It is not cyclic, it is acyclic. This is simply development, development of the self. So you can see that the development can take place only in the conscious unit. The development can take place only in the conscious unit. It is not possible with material units. In material units, there will always be cyclicality. Are you able to see this? You have gone through this diagram earlier also. Now we are trying to look at this diagram again with more clarity since we have discussed about the activities of the self in detail. So you can be in a better position to understand all these words. So try to make out which words are not clear to you. 
isn't it? Note them down and you can try to reflect on the meaning of those words. So now it is time for self-reflection. So we'll have an assignment here. So the homework today is when you are looking at two units in nature, what do you see in between the two? Are you able to see the gap? That is the void between two units. For example, I am here and the monitor is at a distance from me. The wall is there at a distance from me. So many things are there in the room at a distance from me. So the void is there, the gap is there. So are you able to see this? Are you able to see the effect of one unit on another, another unit? Are you able to see the relationship between the two units? Are you able to see the harmony in each unit and all these units put together? And are you able to see the coexistence in each unit and all these units put together? So what you are able to see right now, make an evaluation of yourself, make an appraisal of yourself. Then can you see that self and body are two distinct realities in coexistence? This is something that we have to discuss in exercise two in step one. Then there's a distance between the two, which is something going to be discussed in exercise two step four. And each of them is in space and they are transacting the information through space, something that we are discussing in exercise two step two. So reflect on all this and try to see that the self is there in coexistence, submerged in space. This may take a little time for you. I'm not assuming that you are going to see this this very moment, but at least you can be clear that this is something to be seen, something to be observed directly as a pure observer without any assumption, without any iota of doubt. This is the development of the self. So today in this lecture, we saw how the whole existence is there as coexistence, how the nature is submerged in space and how the nature is ever present, ever expressing and ever effective. So this is all for the lecture today. Thank you.